during the earthquake, she said both parents died, mother and father. Oh. I was in the I was in the house. She said she went away, she said she went away and her mom could not have, didn't have time to run away from the house. And she passed. Haiti, a land that for decades has suffered the ravages of corruption, natural disasters, and hunger. But against this backdrop of intense human suffering, the Haitian people stand tall, determined to build a nation where all people are nurtured by respect, each with an opportunity to flourish, especially the children. Over 25 years ago, Helen Little made her first trip to Haiti, and in a sense, she's never left. I first heard about Haiti when somebody came to my church in January of 1984 and did a program uh, about their work, their mission work in Haiti. Before that, I didn't even know Haiti existed. But I knew after they finished telling the story that I wanted to come here. And two years later, I was on a plane. Miss Helen spends most of her time in the United States, but every day tells the stories of her beloved Haitian friends, raising awareness, funds, and capturing the imagination of others. Most nights, she takes time to sew clothes for her children. She's proof that one person can make a difference, a big difference. For years, Helen supported a number of organizations and individuals who championed the cause of the Haitians. She came alongside Pastor Bruce Lee Delma, who wanted to start a school in Petite Guave. Bruce Lee grew up illiterate on the streets of Haiti. As an adult, he determined not to let any child in his community grow up without schooling, understanding that breaking the generational cycle of poverty begins with educating the children. With Miss Helen's support, Bruce Lee's school quickly grew to over 700 students. Only a lack of funds keeps it from helping hundreds more. Without this school, these bright young children would most likely grow up illiterate. Miss Helen's passion for educating Haiti's children has driven her to raise funds to start seven schools. Recently, Miss Helen flew to Haiti to attend the wedding of Boaz, whom she sponsored when he was a young boy over 25 years ago. I have just watched Boaz grow into a fine young man. He's a good Christian young man and uh, he's going to be part of the new Haiti. Both of his parents died when he was a teenager and there was no one to take care of him. Miss Helen took him in as her son not to rescue him from Haiti, but to rescue him in Haiti. After the death of my mother and my father, Helen um, sent me to Port Prince for um, for continue my school. He paid my secondary school, he paid my university school, and now so I am an engineer. One of his first jobs was to create a site plan for the land development of a future community center right in his neighborhood. He's an example of how the new Haiti is emerging from the resourcefulness of trained and empowered young people. And for Boaz's mother and father, I welcome Looney into the family. And for Boaz and Looney, I represent really the family of these two people. I wish you a very long, happy life. Je vous souhaite une longue vie à deux. I love you both. Je vous aime toutes deux. Merci. Thank you so much, Mother Helen. I love her so much, and she loves me so much too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. God bless all. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
Miss Helen had long dreamed of starting a children's home of her own. That dream became reality in 2007 when the Ryan Epps Home for Children opened just outside Port-au-Prince. Yvonne, a close friend of Helen's, moved his family, along with 10 homeless children, into a rented house where he and his wife, Unid, created a safe and loving environment for the children. Just three years later, the earthquake destroyed the rented facility, leaving the children to live in tents. But fortunately, Miss Helen and her team had previously set plans in motion to build a permanent home for the children. The first structure was framed in just four days. This building now provides classrooms for over 120 children in the community, and the numbers continue to grow each year. The children in the Ryan Epps home are being fed, they're, they're clean, they've got good beds, they are happy. It amazes me how within one day a brand new child can integrate and become a part of the family. And they are family in that home. We are growing a new society in Haiti, right there in the home, and they will never be satisfied with the old ways. A second building was constructed that currently provides dorms and living space for the over 20 adoptees of the Ryan Epps Home for Children. So much has happened in 22 months. It, it's a miracle, truly. And now we're looking to develop the third piece of property, which will be a community building. It will be, we'll move the church there. When we move the church there, it will free up two rooms that we're using now and they can become school rooms. But we'll also have a community health center where people can go for fevers, colds, aches, pains. And we'll have a health care nurse, a Haitian nurse, who will be able to guide the people in this community in better health practices, hopefully in family planning. And then we will have a skills training center which will equip the adults to have better jobs. And I believe that better jobs are gonna to come to this country and when they are equipped, they will be able to get jobs that pay better, and they can provide for their own children better. Helen's heart has found permanent residence in the dusty streets and rugged hills of Haiti. Once she saw Jesus in the eyes of the children, she never blinked. Helen is a testament to the fact that one can make a great contribution to the kingdom of God in one's 50s, 60s, and beyond. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Helen. Happy birthday to you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I do want people to believe in Haiti. I do believe it is like that rose that's waiting to open up and show its full beauty. Haiti is a land of promise, and we can help to make that promise come true. We have that opportunity. We will be happier by being a part of that. Happiness is not staying home and being comfortable. Happiness is enabling somebody else to have that better life that we have had. I love the orphanage because at the orphanage I get educated, I learn about Jesus Christ, I feel happy, and I love this place. I feel like I'm home. All children in Haiti need the privilege of being as happy as these children are. And are you happy to be here, Jenny? Est-ce que content pour ici là? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. And we're happy to have her here. No content to Bunungan or Seattle. No more questions? That's it. That's it. That was great. Okay. Yay, Jenny! <laughs>